Welcome to the Author Out Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Jim. <laughs> and for the viewers, you can see where we are on my screen because I'm pointing again. For you guys, <laughs> it won't make sense because however you arrange on your screen is different than my screen. So uh, this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road. Uh, we really are going to go kind of all over the place tonight. This should be, should be pretty fun. Uh, as always, we're socially distanced. We did it way before it was mandated. It's the only way we can do the show. So we're going to keep doing it. Uh, I'm in Kansas City, Ross, Connecticut. Jim's in Chicago. Chicago area, yep. It should be. <laughs> we'll get into <laughs> the specifics later. But uh, yeah, real real fast, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. So I'm Jim O'Brill. I'm the uh, marketing director for the Chicago Auto Show and the Chicago Automobile Trade Association. Uh, that's like the main job title, but I'm also a radio host for a program we put together called Drive Chicago. Uh, so I get to review cars and do stuff like this and talk car talk and, and drive <laughs> different cars all the time and have, and have fun with it. Right. And for the listener, Jim and I were at Road America together for the Midwest uh, fall event. So that's, right. that's how Jim and I met. Uh, Robbie <laughs> made sure that we talked to each other. So <laughs> Jim's got a very car themed background going. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit. This is my, <laughs> uh, my little oasis in the basement of my, uh, not only the big cars, but I also collect the small ones. So this is mm-hmm. where they all live now. <laughs> See, all in. Yep. One of I, us. Mine's blurred because there is a chance a kid will walk by. So clothes, <laughs> not clothes. We don't know. So we just blur it. So. Right. <laughs> <It's safer that laughs> right. We've gotten both. Who knows? Yeah, we've gotten both. So uh, industry news. Uh, oh, the first one. Of course, the first one I have on the list is the one I haven't pulled an image for yet. So we're going to start <laughs> with the Maverick. <laughs> okay. Because... Jim, did you drive the Maverick? You know, I did not get a chance to. Uh, Every time I went to get in that truck at the rally, it was it was taken. So you called it a truck. Everybody's calling it a truck. It is a pickup. Like it's. But the one at SEMA was hilarious because they like street styled it up and dropped it and put turbo fans on it. Yeah, the you turbo know fans are people are gonna do with this truck because this is what they do with like the old Nissan hard bodies and the old little Toyotas out west. This is what Dude, you see all over the place. Yeah. Even in 2006, like with the Colorado Extreme, people were doing this, you know. So this is this is good. I I and I think a lot of people welcome this because you can, you know, you don't need to do dumb wheels like this, but you can drive something like this every day and still have a good time. I will maintain they are good wheels. I like them a lot. <laughs> They're different. <laughs> They're, yeah, different is a word for them. They're turbo fans. They look like they belong on a Group B rally car. Like mm-hmm. it's it's kind of the com- combination of two worlds here by mini trucking and rally combined. But so I can't tell, and I don't know if anybody's actually provided an answer on this. Is the paint on the SEMA Maverick the same blue that they have on the Focus RS? Uh, is that performance blue? No, I don't think so. Is that just a standard Maverick color? Because if so, it's good. I don't think anything at SEMA is a standard color. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fair enough. <laughs> is it chrome? No. Then it's it's totally custom. They mixed that in. I'm and kind of bummed I didn't get out there this year. I was out there in 2019 uh, and the year before, but this year I didn't make it out there. Lots, yeah, lots of cool stuff out there. I haven't been since 2015. So you've been. <laughs> and I don't particularly need to go back that was a lot of walking <laughs> ross quick google search i couldn't figure out if it was the right okay. color or not so but it's i did try um, the listeners should look up a picture or pull the youtube for this it's good it's a good good color good truck um yeah maverick was hot for sema maverick was, was hot it's popular and then they had another truck at sema <laughs> uh and i can't seriously my images come on <laughs> Of course, it's I mean, a new they, guest tonight, and so I'm going to struggle with the computer. <laughs> just that's just a, how it goes. I think most of the audience could probably use their imagination for this one. Well, but, it's a Ford F100, but... Yeah, so take an F100 and then remove the gas-powered engine and put an electric crate motor under the... It, it, it was hood-mounted, right? Like, it was in the front, Up front, yes. okay. So it actually even put a little bit of a frunk in there with it. Yeah, I was just saying that's <laughs> it, a, it's the befrunked. image I'm grabbing has the frunk as well. Uh, yeah, there, you, there go. you go. That's and, yeah, not much of a frunk, but so there's a pretty beefy strut tower bar there. 
Oh yeah. Do you know how wobbly F one hundreds were? <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> Due to the amount of rigidity that yeah. wasn't in those trucks, like. <laughs> yeah. So basically, <laughs> they took a Ford Mach-E motor, correct? Correct. And slid that in here, but then also packaged or basically uh, not packaged, but like presented it as the illuminator electric crate engine crate motor and sold out of all of the ones that they had available also clever wordplay because they do have an illuminator for the aluminum head coyote i believe it is is that really yeah that's why it was brilliant brilliant naming yeah yeah (laughs) but and yeah and like you said they sold them out like this come SEMA next year Half the builds are everybody that bought one that put a reservation down was at, was at SEMA. <laughs> well, and those prices weren't, I think it was 3900 right? For, yeah. the, for the motor. So, really, not bad. Uh, so, we, were, we were talking about this uh, on our show. And then, what's the other? Well, we've got the Chevy crate motor that's like 100 grand or, or like 40 grand or whatever it is. A that's thousand horsepower. That's a thousand horsepower. Yeah. 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 10.04. Like, so that, and then you've got this that pops up from Florida. It's like, well, this is more reasonable if you're going to do something. And if, I don't know if you saw pictures of the inside of this truck, but it's like stepping into a Mach-E in a... Jim's in my head because it's Ford literally F-100. where I was going yep. next. Got the, <laughs> the, got the Mustang Mach-E screen and everything. There you go. Yeah, yeah. The shifter, all the dial to change yeah. gears. But I think I had more people say, this motor would be good in my project vehicle, more so than any other crate motor that's been released in the last like five years. Well, that, it, that's saying a lot because it's electric if it comes with like i think right now it's just motor like i don't think i think there might be some controllers that come with it they're definitely not doing battery packs yet no battery right that's um, the catch so you're on your own to source your own batteries i think there was some version of controller because that's that's the part that gets me when so way back in the day when i still had the land cruiser and we were talking about classic evs and 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 refitting stuff The research I did was, it's not so much the motor. Batteries are expensive, yes. But then the controllers that have, they get the the motor and the batteries to talk, to talk to the throttle, like all of that is what the complication and the expense is. So if they've helped you source that, again, I'm on board. Now Mm -hmm. EV West would do all of it. So, right, right, right. But like you're, you're looking, Right now, you're still looking at the same amount of money for an EV swap, like a legit EV swap, as you are for an LS swap. But yes. it's not going to be long until one of those numbers probably starts to go down more, and the other mm-hmm. one probably starts to go up more. As <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. going to be a while before LS engines are in short well, supply. Those are two lines that are diverging. Like right now, they're kind of similar, but eventually... And I... I wrote about this for Hooniverse recently because I found an article that was talking about like uh, renewable energy sources, solar, wind, um, uh, electrolysis for making hydrogen, solar, wind, electrolysis, and then, and then just battery storage in general. Like the, the article, basically the premise is those are all on technology learning curves right now. We're far enough into the, to those different versions of technology. We're not going to lose them. We're not losing solar. We're not losing wind. We're not going to lose like, electrolysis for producing hydrogen we're now stuck with those basically is what the article said and because of that we're going to continue to advance those technologies to the point where it's no longer going to matter what government body mandates for say they're like we'll give you a tax cut if you do this type of technology those type of technologies are going to become so cheap it now makes fiscal sense on their own to go those route Mm -hmm. Now, we can get into the areas of the country that need those versus those don't. Like all the populations lived on the coast where there's not a ton of room for wind farms and solars. Mm -hmm. But knowing that those technologies are coming anyway, then led to a point people like, well, what about recycling batteries? Which I found another study, (laughs) an actual study. This one had scientific results. Slippery slope here. Right. <laughs> but this one had real results. Like the other guy was just like, these are on learning curves. We're going to get there. I'm like, that's a bunch of hypothesis. The one that I found that had results, like they took 
old batteries that sucked and did what we all talk about and recycled the materials. Hmm. They cleaned out the impurities. They got rid of the copper, the iron, whatever, and then put those back into new types of batteries. And then we're like, all right, let's test them. Let's see how good they are. And the compare, well, long story short, too long, didn't read. <laughs> <laughs> the recycled batteries cycled 50% longer before hmm. they started to lose 30% of their capacity. That's interesting. So virgin materials, brand new, I think they were lithium ions, mm-hmm. went 7,000 cycles before they lost 30% of their battery capacity. The recycled ones went 11,000. They, they went 4,000 cycles very fast before they started mm-hmm. to lose that 30%. It's more. like additive recycling. <laughs> right? Like, so that, that mythical thing that we all hear about is like, well, we will run out of materials. Like the recycled shit work longer. Now, again, it's one study. But that's my favorite. And this is where I'm like, Jim, I was a middle school teacher for 10 years. So like I get super geeky on the science stuff every now and then because I haven't been able to talk to anybody about this stuff in forever. My kids don't give a shit. So the best part is now someone will try to replicate that. Somebody else will try to back that up. The scientific community will not let one study exist and take the credit. Mm -hmm. Somebody else will be like, wait, hold on. And so we'll actually get some findings and some other things. And I don't know. I'm, I think EVs are going to be better than we give them credit for. There's there's a lot to learn from those. We we read it, we talked about an article huh, maybe a month ago on our show about, and again I think this was a singular study type thing about bringing your EV in, kind of like you swap your uh, your gas tank on your um, your grill, and so like you run out of charge or you're running out of charge, you just pull into a station and they swap the battery out and you roll away so like it becomes minutes rather than waiting to charge it you just right. swap that yeah. and it's like a battery swap like you're doing your propane exchanges but that would require standardized it would it would require a automakers. battery system. That, the automakers would have to cooperate there <laughs> right but i i we, think this was more we can't even get one single plug <laughs> right <yeah. laughs> probably a long way off but from like a fleet standpoint which is i think where this was kind of going for more of like a commercial use like you're not wasting time charging batteries but all this battery tech there's so much technology and and science to this that is above my head right um, well it's, it also it's kind of cool to see where this is going to be for our kids when they're driving exactly well it, it made me think of like think of it your cell phone like towards the end of its life it starts to not hold a charge as long mm-hmm. i could put the recycle battery in it <laughs> and now yeah. do you have all of your capacity back but it lasts 50% longer. Like it just, uh, yeah, I, I get excited about the nerdy connotations that exist in the world that we haven't even got to yet. Like the, the things that we're going to benefit from, we don't even know yet. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I like Ford's F-100. That was way off the whale. Yeah, F-100. <laughs> tangent, tangent. That was good though. We got it some wouldn't science be, here tonight. It wouldn't be a show if we didn't tangent at least once hard. Like it just... <laughs> Fair enough. Normally, it's more into random <laughs> stuff. So, uh, the other one I wanted to talk about is the I hate the name, the Tacozilla. Tacozilla. <laughs> it took a took. It's uh. It, so, if you're unfamiliar with the Chinook campers of the '70s and the '80s that were on tiny two-wheel drive Toyota pickups. That's what this is a modern take on. Like they literally, and it's, it's grafted to the body. Like it's not, that's not like a bed camper back there. It is all one thing, which is just like. Pass through. Yeah. It has, it has, it's fully passed through. So it is one in the same. Um, There's a lot to talk about on this one. I mean, they did the graphics to look era correct or period correct. Rather. I read something that said they shaped the actual contours of the camper to be reminiscent of the shape of the campers on the original vehicles. Like they didn't really, this wasn't just like a quick and easy SEMA build. This was, you know, no, this one's full and thorough. they went all in. Even, yeah. even the back door is not just a straight door. Like they, they really did this. I, I, I think it's cool. I, I kind of like it. I, I kind of dig it. the retro thing. Um, 
I, I was talking about this with my kids and we have an old pop-up camper, uh, which is another story, but they're like, can we get one of these? Cause I, I happened to be driving a, a Tacoma as a fleet vehicle last week. So they're like, is it going to be one with a camper? I'm like, no, that's not really real. It's not real yeah, world. Real. Right. Could, that's not like coming out. Like that's You're going to see these all over. They but. could probably sell a hundred of those at 500 grand. I wouldn't doubt it for a second. 500. Like that's earth roamer money, buddy. This is a throw more money, but there's a lot of wealthy Toyota fanboys out there. If you told me it was a hundred grand, maybe a hundred, a hundred grand is a Tacoma and like a GFC. <laughs> Am I you allowed? Know? Like, can I finance this? Like I can finance an RV. Yes. Like can exactly. I finance it for 20 years? years? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can live in it. I, there's gotta be uh, some, right? Right. Right. That's, it's probably about the same size as my right? house. They, they, they've got a bathroom in this thing. Yeah. yeah. We actually, Sarah and I actually had the the joke discussion the other day because she was like, wait, if we can finance something for 20 years, she's like, I want a new one. I don't want to use one. Right. I was like, okay. <laughs> That'll still be three grand a month. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not but, buying the, the $200,000 one. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> no. um, one interesting thing from that press photo that I just wanted to point out, the first one of the profile, yeah. is that one of the only times I've ever noticed this, they weren't sure to line the front and the rear wheels up to be aligned one has the spokes pointing one way and one has the spokes pointing the other way oh really am i please tell me i didn't just make that up because no no you you uh you got close enough here i'll reshare yeah one because one had the the rear wheel has the v yeah no you're i'm looking at it on my other screen yeah usually press photos and the front wheel has the single have them perfectly aligned i will give them credit the trds the center caps read correct they were probably they looking at that, <laughs> which you can barely read. <laughs> but the general and the grabber don't. It's not the same rotation oh. on the. Oh. I wonder if that if somebody be somebody in art in like their art department said no. It, it makes it look weird if it if one goes if it's perfect. Uh, whatever. I love it. I drive it. <laughs> I would. I mean, I would. Yeah, I want to. I want to play with it. Like I don't know. That's not like Black Bear Pass. Like I don't want that much weight off camber no no but you could do like pretty much any desert yeah it's got a snorkel still i mean right <laughs> to me it's to me this is like intake <laughs> i want to go hang out in utah pretty much i just this is probably be, it'd probably be okay in the pacific northwest too why wouldn't it be Right, like it's it's still the width of a Tacoma, like it's like low hanging trees. Well, that's yeah, that was the, one of the things when they were building that they wanted to keep the width and everything the same, yeah. right? Yeah, I like it. It's fun. It's dumb. I'm gonna do it. It's as it's SEMA builds go. <laughs> it's pretty good. Oh, it's super mild as far as SEMA builds go. Well, like it it seems to be done well. Like that's not always the case in SEMA. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh. Do I have any more SEMA stuff? I'll have Nissan on here, but I missed pulling images. Nissan Frontier? Uh, Nissan Frontier. I mean, we talked about that pretty extensively. It's just they had a a few special Frontiers, right? What, like rooftop tents and, and overland kit, basically. So when you just search up Frontier and SEMA, the truck that needs to be there doesn't come up first. <laughs> I'm sure Old, they would love, they'd love to know that. <laughs> they probably don't want to know that about their SEO. So this, <laughs> this is mild as SEMA builds go. Like it's a Nismo off-road. They put all the Nismo stuff on it. That's like an Overland Expo West build that they just didn't deliver in time. They brought it to SEMA instead. Yeah. So I did see that uh, Lynn and Sedona's race truck, Bruce, they, they named the truck Bruce. That that was also there, and it was also completely filthy, which was they my were favorite. there too. Yeah, yes, they, they were, were there. They, were, they, there they well. were on stage. They did an interview, so you can find that. Uh, I think on a SEMA channel. I think it was on a SEMA YouTube channel. Dude, but, I like the Frontier more. Every time I see him now, I like him more and more. You know, after I've driven Tacoma so extensively, and I, I still love the Tacoma as much as I hate a couple things about it, and after I, you know, put. 750 miles on a frontier in three days i am like this looks fantastic i 
I would drive the shit out of that. I think they did a good job with this design. I, Chris, did you drive it at the rally? I did. I, I, <laughs> I we've been over my, my yeah. sticking point with it. it has crazy heavy steering. It's unbelievable how heavy the steering is. Like I am, I, I am from it. the world of truck over boosted power steering. Like the suburban, I can turn with a finger. Like the frontier, <laughs> I was like, am I driving a sports car all of a sudden? Like this thing is heavy. But beyond that, it was great. Great truck. Yeah, I I didn't get to do 750 miles like Ross did. So Nissan, if you wouldn't mind sending this to Kansas, I definitely <laughs> I'll drive to Denver and back. I'll put that with. 1400 miles on it (laughs) yeah but no i like this truck i thought it looked good as sema goes it's very subdued (laughs) like it's not it's been a while since we talked about sema stuff we didn't have it last year right no no (laughs) i don't think so yeah it seems weird to talk about sema stuff i think that's it for sema right that's um that is all of us yeah okay good just bruce just Bruce. Just so Bruce. let's, um, are you pulling up a picture of Bruce? Uh, no, I was actually going to the leaked images from over the weekend. That wasn't okay. the press launch that you were about to talk about. Um, what press launch that I, oh, I was going to, this is what I, yeah. Okay. This is where you're uh, going to go. Bronco Raptor. Bronco Raptor. We know what Bronco Raptor is going to look like. Actually, what if, what do all those, the camo has something on it that must mean something. Can you discern what that is? They, if it's like past camo from Ford, it would be like all of the different activities you would use your Bronco to do, like kayaking and hiking. And right. but those, those look like mini Broncos. I'm not sure. Uh, I can't tell. It's very small. It is. I'm not going to get any bigger on my screen. Sorry. No, no. <laughs> so they didn't give any or provide any real information other than these teasers. And from it, we can tell uh, it looks like 35 inch KO2s, hopefully, yep. probably pulled straight from the actual Raptor. We can tell that it has the huge Ford grill, just like the Raptor. We can tell it has enormous, 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 like bolt on fender flares, uh, unlike the Raptor. The Raptors are actually pretty well integrated, but. Yeah, it, it like those got to be like six inch flares, right? I, I can't imagine them being it, anything less. Um, it looks like I don't I don't know what the suspension difference is, but it looks like the track is wider. The track is definitely, definitely wider. Yeah, the, the tires sit almost entirely out from under the body of the vehicle itself which on the current, you know, four-door and two-door Sasquatch, the tires are still like probably 50 or 60% under the vehicle. And this looks like they're almost completely out from underneath. It's like it's, it looks like it's 5% underneath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't, I, I don't remember what the other pictures look like, but I don't think there was much else to extrapolate were- that we haven't already been able to... Do you yeah. think it's interesting? I want to ask you guys because we we had this discussion about this vehicle. So they s- spent so much time on the actual Bronco, creating a grill that says Bronco, and then you bring out the Raptor and they throw the Ford name on it. But for all other Bronco variants, you really don't see the Ford name on it. It's so much about just the Bronco brand. You think it's interesting that they threw Ford on here? I think they're trying to create Raptor as its own brand in the same way the Ranger just has Ford across the front. In, on the Ranger Raptor, I think that's, I think that's their, you know, their big catch-all for their top of the line. Just their signature. That they're go- I yeah. kind of equated it to what Toyota does with CRD Pro, and that they're mm-hmm. just going to kind of do that with it. But uh, I, just an interesting note that you know, I don't think it's full like Hyundai Genesis with Genesis being its own luxury brand now. I just think no. it's no, it's just a, a performance or off-road. Yeah, it's going to be like. Nismo, it's gonna right. be it, it would be the equivalent of if it said like SVT, right? But because that's not really a thing anymore, in the same way that it used to be. Uh, I I don't know. It, it just falls under. I think the question more is: Is this going to be the Halo vehicle, or, or is the the F one fifty Raptor still going to be the Halo Raptor? But 
either way, you know. Well, aren't we getting F-150 Raptor R? Yes. Okay. So I bet that'll be be the halo (laughs) still. Um, Because this, the speculation is we're not getting a V8. We're, we assume there's a horsepower bump with Bronco Raptor, possibly a yeah. 3.5. Right. The, um, but we're fairly certain no Explorer V8. Explorer ST motor yeah. engine. Motor. Yes. The twin turbo 3.5 liter, which is, that's what they Strong debuted engine. EcoBoost with, right? In the F 150 yeah. was that original. And that 2011 or 12, those things yeah. fucking haul. That thing's spicy. Like, like it's dude, not. <laughs> I was in somebody's with an intake and a, an intake exhaust tune and downpipes and it was fast well that's the same powertrain that you could get in a ford flex and supposedly mm-hmm. those were a software map away from 600 so <laughs> in a ford flex and the bronco's the same shape there we go full yeah. full circle or full box <laughs> <laughs> i i mean i'm starting to see more of them around town like it's it's it has been a, like Normally when new trucks come out, like we see them fairly frequently. I mean, we're in truck central here, but <laughs> like Bron- Broncos have been a hot minute showing up. Uh, I saw one today that was like soft top and it had much smaller wheels on than even what we saw. Uh, Jim of the two that we were around, right? which was at the Badlands. It was kind of a smaller wheel. It had generals instead of uh, the, the Goodyear Goodyears. Goodyears. <laughs> They refused to write the word Wrangler on the truck. Um, and it like it was even smaller than those. And I was just kind of like, oh, buddy. Like it's it's like when you see a base base Wrangler. Yeah, uh, JLE, <laughs> and you're like, homie, yep. 32s at least. Like, yep. and anyway, it's kind of loose. Yeah, I'm excited <laughs> it's coming. We need some better ones. They need to get their hard tops figured out. I'm assuming the Bronco Raptor will have the same. Should we take uh base price bets for Bronco Raptor? Did these? 60s. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna. I was gonna. 50s say, and new 35 is a mantra we use a lot around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's either gonna be 54.9 or 59.9. What is yeah. what is 392 Wrangler start at? 70. That's more, I think. Dart. Yeah, like seven. It, it's, I think. It, I think Jim's right. I think it's 74. Okay. So that if this starts below that, that's what they need to undercut. Yeah. That's the. That's why they, I'm saying they'll, go, they'll push the limit because I don't know. They might lose money on these for a little bit <laughs> if they can. I. Uh, <laughs> they already lost money on all the. What is the Raptor time. start? What is the F-150 Raptor? If that starts. Right. So seventy four nine nine five for the three ninety two. Okay, that's what I thought. And oh man, F-150 Raptor is sixty four four ninety five. So well, it'll be less than that. It, I think they'll yeah. Keep yeah. I think I'm I'm gonna Wait, go with so I can get an F one figure onto something like that. I can get an F one fifty wrapper for cheaper than I can get that three ninety two Wrangler. Oh yeah. And somebody, one of the journalists, had one this week that was like ninety two or ninety three or something for the Wrangler. <laughs> the Wrangler. <laughs> the, so the one we drove was eighty. What was it? Eighty. Eighty three five. I think. Because it was the re, it was three ninety two Wrangler with the recon, recon with the re, yeah yeah. But like, so Jim, my lukewarm take here is I would rather have the two seven Bronco for 50 than the 392 Wrangler for 75, 80, because I think it's like 85% of the same truck. I can see that. It's a lukewarm take. It's not really a hot take. Like it's not, yeah. nobody's impressed. It's with not, it. Nobody it's likes not it. apples to apples. It's yeah. not 75 yeah. for 75. Sure. So I just, the Bronco had buttons they did stuff <laughs> so all right it did stuff <laughs> it did stuff ross uh, I'm, I'm going to utv pictures because i don't have you okay. to fill us all, all right. on this well we're gonna skip ford ranger um because there's yes. nothing other than the new ones coming on the 24th okay today's big polaris news was the 2022 wide open models launched and i say that figuratively and literally so you guys know, and everybody <laughs> listening knows, Polaris has been leading the UTV side by side world um, for pretty much 10 or 11 years now, like just stretching their lead further and further. Uh, Can Am's closed the gap sometimes, but Polaris is really driving the industry. So 
you know, they have to one up themselves consistently. So the new models are the Turbo R, starts at 26 or 25,999. Um, it's 181 horsepower with a turbocharged twin cylinder, uh, inline twin. It's so and nuts. It's that's that one's crazy. J- just wait. So, <laughs> you know, some of the problems with the razors in the past is that the suspension and engine performance has increased at a rate that the actual like chassis and strength of the components hasn't been able to keep up with so they fully boxed this is the uh the frame on this everything's made out of like high quality steel is what they're saying it's one piece chassis so this is the the base model the turbo r has 28 inches of suspension travel good lord 16 inches of ground clearance it's 74 inches wide uh, 15 inch wheels 32 inch tires it has the most reactive um, suspension available on any machine is what they're saying. So it's got Fox live valve, you know, internal bypass shocks and this new dynamics DV with selectable ride modes. And it monitors compression and rebound a thousand times a second is what I read and uh, what was being, you know, passed around today. So it should be insanely capable and that's the Turbo R. Then there's the Pro R. Which, which is what is done. <laughs> which is what's being seen here. Oh, well, that started life as a Pro R and then they, you know, probably put 30 grand into it. But so the Pro R starts at 31.9, has a two liter four cylinder engine that makes 225 horsepower, naturally aspirated. Uh, it gets a couple of modes to control the throttle for sand and rock crawling so that you don't, you know, launch the thing in the most inopportune times um it you know has even more beefy hardware on the suspension and the chassis Uh, they're claiming two times the torsional stiffness of the outgoing halo razor it's a one-piece roll cage and they are calling it a roll cage now it is not a uh, roll protection system it is in fact a roll cage so this one has 29 inches of travel 16 inches of ground clearance and the four seat launch edition starts at 43,999. And I built one on Polaris's configurator for a total of (laughs) $54,000. Were we just talking those numbers for like Broncos and (laughs) And (laughs) this will go faster over pretty much every trend than a Bronco keep that in mind. Um, you know, and we, I had a couple of conversations with people in the off-road UTV world today who were saying, you know, it's crazy, but it's not because 10 years ago to get something capable of this kind of off-road performance, be it speed or, you know, like comfort, you'd have to spend probably quarter million dollars to have this kind of suspension and, and this kind of like reliability and repeated use that can sustain the abuse that these machines do. So I don't know, prices are astronomical. I don't think anybody is arguing that, but these are basically out of the box Baja razors and they're claiming the cage can actually hold the weight of the machine now. So it's (laughs) it's wild. Um, I don't think anybody watching the launch today was shocked by any of the information that came out, but you know, it's still 225 horsepower and something that weighs 2000 pounds dry. So it's, uh, that's not going to be a slow machine. And if Polaris is listening, which I hope they are, and, uh, I've been kind to them and they've been kind to me. Maybe I can get my hands on one. Oh, and Chris wants to play me. with one too. <laughs> send it to me. Ross doesn't need to drive yeah. it. He doesn't write anything for a UTV driver, or ATV rider. Oh, send no, it to me. No, didn't just review <laughs> a razor for the side or anything. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just don't understand how this much power is usable in any trail that's not just a dune or a desert. So I will uh, hopefully have news on that. And these are for spring of 22. I think they should send it to me because I have sand dunes and tight wooded mountains nearby i already have what you have but i have sand dunes so send yeah. it to me yeah. i want to try i want to put some stud tires on it and try like ice racing with one of them i feel like that would be perfect for it well they're all real well they can be rear wheel drive right rear wheel drive with all wheel drive on demand you know so it sends power wherever it feels like it but 
dear Kevin and Zach, when you do the next comparison test, <laughs> I will send some messages. Oh man. Anyway, I, Jim, I've, I've done nothing with side by sides. That's why I'm, it's kind of a running joke, but I'm like, I should do that. <laughs> you should. <laughs> You should but, but my normal mantra is Whole another category right exactly my normal <laughs> mantra is like i should do that but like are the roll cages really roll cages and normally they're not but <laughs> you know the thing is on, on an atv you don't have a roll cage so you can't even have that tiny bit of like fake protection fake yeah well fake i guess in this, in this since it's actual real protection they're saying now so i uh, yeah. say so anyway, that's side by side that's the player's story. news uh we can skip <laughs> we can skip my news we'll talk about that later this week or skip your time. news i'll yeah, do my news real fast yeah do I, it. I bought wheels bought some rims <laughs> they are not fancy they're not rims <laughs> they're, they are they're, so they're wheels <laughs> they are literally 18s and my computer is being slow as i to go to my full <laughs> images and so uh jim to provide context i don't know if you know chris has a suburban the suburban came on 22s and the wheels seen here will be replacing said 22s. Gotcha. The, the, the Michelins that are on the 22s are fantastic tires. I'm going to be selling them hopefully soon. Uh, they have less than 15,000 miles on them. Um, but literally, they are like rubber bands on the outside of a 22. Say, with, there's, there's no off-roading in that. Yeah. And I might I might Probably actually... really gravel. <laughs> yeah, I might try this weekend actually and see. I got some buddies that were like, hey, we're going to go here. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> maybe it's supposed to be cold too so i was like maybe i could sleep in the truck like we'll see we'll think about it but so about some 18 at least a newer suburban it's got to be a newer suburban if it's got the bigger wheels right yeah it's a 17 like it's okay. uh it's got magna ride too which just like complicates everything just mm -hmm. anyway it's really nice to run the family around it um i bought these yeah. 18s of a guy who they came off a 17 silverado and i was like perfect and he's like i he got newer wheels and couldn't get the, the TPMS uh, sensors to work. I'm hoping because these are off the 17 Silverado to work with my 17 Suburban, but like a flash isn't that hard here. So no. we can. They should be able to just scan it and yeah. program it. Depends on who you had installed, but that's oh, another thing. Yeah. Uh, I am talking to tire suppliers because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to drop another grand in tires. So, um, yeah, so hopefully there's, I, I don't, I've had KO2s. We have the Toyos on the Sequoia. Love them on the Sequoia. They're really great tires. I don't, they're so loud and I drive the interstate to work every day. I don't really want to go with something as aggressive as the Toyo or a KO2. Um, so I'm looking at like, I don't want to call them like fake all-terrain. That's not what they are. They're less no, they're aggressive. Not. They're not. They're, I would save, and I think we should, defer from mentioning brand until things fall further into place but yeah i, well, I wasn't going uh, specific brand yet yeah uh, they, i was gonna shoot the window yeah <laughs> like more I've, streetable all yeah terrains like the versus i'd say it's a crossover between like a highway tire and an all-terrain versus an all-terrain sits I, between mud and highway my main thing was i just wanted the, something with a diagram. little little firmer sidewall so if I do have to air down a little bit, I don't have to worry about it popping or tearing. And, and sidewall. Yeah. Just just sidewall at all. Yeah. Side, sidewall should benefit the truck as it rides anyway. So um, hopefully. So I bought wheels. I've been, I, I didn't really talk about it a lot, but it's been something that's been in the back of my head for a really long time. It frustrates me coming out. Like the size of the truck. Who, did, who are we talking to? Was it Matt Schwartz who we were talking to? Where I showed him an image and he's like, those are really 22? Like, you can't yeah. really... No, they look like 19s or 20s on the truck because the truck's so freaking big. <laughs> yeah, it's... There we go. I got the picture. Can't really tell that they're 22s in the image, but that's the giant... That's... So that it, it is it is Wi-Fi enabled and I uh, named the Wi-Fi There She Blows. And the kids are like, why? And I was like, it's a big white whale, guys. <laughs> Like in there, and they're like, "What? I don't get this." I said, "Read a book." Read a book. <laughs> <laughs> One kid heard me say Moby Dick, though, so they've been calling it Richard. Ah, uh, that, that checks out. <laughs> I love that kid. He's that kid's funny. He's gonna go far. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <He's all> 
He's going to go really far. Okay. I got to scroll past all that stuff. So much stuff. All right, Jim, you want to talk new car trends first? You want to talk radio show? Where do you want to go? Wherever you want to go. I'm good. <laughs> well, we, we don't, we have new car trend. Isn't that, that's like tomorrow's meeting, right? Yeah. There's a mama meeting about trends in in the industry. It's been a weird uh, it's been a weird year for everything, but the auto industry has been particularly odd uh, since this pandemic started. And so I'll give you my two cents uh, from what I get from working with dealers. So we're at, at the core of my job, we're at an automobile trade association for dealers. We have about 400 new car dealers in the Chicagoland area. So we're a Metro association. A lot of our dealers are also members of the Illinois Auto Dealers Association as well, but we're, we're kind of more focused in the Chicagoland area. Um, so obviously when the pandemic started, it was crazy and nothing was going on for that March and April. And then all of a sudden people decided that they didn't want to ever take public transportation again and decided they wanted to buy cars. And the demand just has skyrocketed. And then you couple that with the whole chip shortage, which... I don't know if it's because I'm so close to it. It's such an obvious thing that I know there's this shortage of chips, but I'm finding there's still a lot of people that don't understand what's going on um, <laughs> as to why dealers don't have cars in their lots. Cause I've got family or friends who are like, Oh, I drove by the Toyota dealer. Why don't they have anything on their lot? And I'm like, well, the global chip shortage. <laughs> like, right. Have like, you what? I don't know what you're talking about. News. Um, the last eight I did. I did see a mini, a picture on Twitter today of a mini dealer, and there was not a single <clears throat> mini on the lot. Yeah, it's it's a wild. It's it's certainly wild for these dealers, and you know, for the dealers, they're they're, they're doing okay. They're having great months. They're selling everything. They're selling is above MSRP. The salesmen are making their numbers. They're they're taking home, you know, good money because everything's selling. Like there's, they're not, they don't have anything. What I used to work in dealerships, we called it rot lot. You know, the stuff that sat in the back of the lot mm -hmm. for, you know, months, nothing is sitting. And, you know, <laughs> if you're, if you're in a position where you can sell a car, which my wife thinks I'm someone that can, because I have four, um, <laughs> and that's not including the press car that's in the driveway. <laughs> Uh, you can make some money on your trade-ins on your used cars. And so for consumers, that's a great thing. Um, the downside is if you want a new one, you have to be willing to wait, um, you know, for what, what it is you want or be willing to settle for something that might not be the specifics of what you want. Um, I was talking to a dealer about a week ago. He said pre-pandemic, they would stock and this is a, a Honda dealer. They would have about 150 cars on their lot, um, new cars. Uh, they have five right now. Oh, uh, oh five my gosh. New cars. He said they're sold before they get off the truck. Um, and he's like, they're now selling to people based off their, you know, they're pulling up their inventory seat. And like, this is what I got coming in. It should be here in a couple of weeks. Uh, if you want this Subaru or, or this Accord, like this is the color combo, you can buy off the list of what's supposed to come or you're special ordering it um, and you're just waiting for it. So people are starting to get into that habit of placing those orders, which is kind of, it, it's changing the industry and how people buy. Um, you're getting exactly what you want and the manufacturers, you know, they're not, pro they're producing what people want they're not producing extra vehicles yeah that are going to sit there so he said you know their prediction what our dealers are saying is we've got a year another year of this you know what um before before a dealer it'll start getting better but before that he's in a position where he says if i even get to a point of having 150 cars on my lot he goes that's at least a year away wow you know I if can. they get to that uh, so crazy, crazy stuff. We ordered a car. We ordered a Kia Telluride, which was in demand in general. Uh, right. To yeah. Replace our minivan. We waited uh, just shy of six months. Um, and I, I joke with people because I've had other people. Oh, I really want to get a Telluride. Like, how do you, you know? You, you've got to know people. Um, I was like, I do know people, but it didn't help me. 
um, about the only thing that helped me is that I, you know, I basically it was transactional for me because mm -hmm. I didn't have to go through any negotiating. I just said, this is, this is what we're buying. Um, and so, yeah, that's our, our Telluride. We've had it for a year now. And the crazy thing is I could probably turn around and sell this and make a profit off of it right now. That's Don't so doubt that nuts. for a second. This is, this is one of those vehicles on that list that, um, the used ones are more than the new ones because they're at least available. Right. Right. Yeah. We're seeing that for the first time ever. Yeah. So it's, it's wild. It's a, it's a wild ride. I, I just keep telling people if your lease is coming up, that's the other thing that I've had people ask me, they're like, Oh, what, what do I do when my lease is up? And if they don't have cars, it's like start talking to your dealer. Now start talking to the dealers early um, a lot of people are afraid of dealers. Dealers are really, they're there to help you. Um, I mean, there's always a few bad eggs out there, but uh, for the most part, dealers are, you know, they're in the service business. They, they, they want to get you what you what you need. Um, so start those conversations early, basically, if you've got a lease coming due and you want to get something specific. We're, we're uh, a year out. My wife's CX-5 lease is up next December or the end of next November. And already like well you should probably know by like spring you know if yeah. we're going to order something and it takes six to eight months like well and the other thing that um you know and this ties into the auto show aspect of, of my job is if you want to test drive cars you can't like they don't yeah, there's really, literally nothing on the lots they don't have it mm -hmm. um and so like we hear all the time and, and you guys are in it you know people there are random people who say, oh, the auto shows aren't what they used to be. But think about it. It's the one place you can go and generally cross shop your cars. Right, right. And, you know, hop in the Telluride, go hop in a Highlander, hop in, you know, the Palisade and the Pilot. And you can, at you can see the differences there in person and if it fits you or not. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of shows, our show in particular this summer, we did a lot of test driving. We did out, we had out, we had a summer show. Uh, so there was a lot of test drives available where 11 different manufacturers participated with vehicles uh, that you could hop in and drive or, or take on these tracks. So there's a lot more that you can do at auto shows now that in this weird world of dealers that you can't even do with your dealer down the street. Right. So the auto shows are going to have to pivot a little bit towards a more interactive yeah, As opposed to like, just come and look at it. No, like you can actually, let's go outside. Like, And we've been doing that for some time. And a lot of people don't realize it, um, that they we've been doing that. I think that ship's probably going to, that dial's going to turn up a little bit and happen even more quickly. But our show in particular, we've had indoor tracks. Uh, Jeep has been doing uh, their track uh, at our show for 17 years now inside McCormick Place, yeah. which is crazy. But you can hop in the Maybe Jeeps. And, too. And, and been doing that, yeah, they've been doing it in New York as well. Uh, and they do the Ram track and Ford had a huge Bronco track at our show this summer for the first time, which was crazy long lines. People were waiting two hours just to really get in a Bronco and go around the track. But it's what people do. I mean, it's, you go to a, a theme park, people wait an hour to yeah, go on a quick ride. It, and you can't crazy. buy one of the rides. At the yeah. Park. Or, well, you can, but. <laughs> None of us have Richie Rich money. <laughs> so yeah weird, weird time in the industry for sure very 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 so you mentioned you have a uh, telluride what else is in your personal garage so the telluride to the family vehicle that's uh, generally what my wife drives uh, that replaced a sienna so if you would have which is funny because if you would ask me 10 years ago if i'd be trading in a toyota for a kia i would have said no way nobody would uh, nobody but, yeah but this telluride's amazing we love it um, so that, that's really her car. Uh, I've got an 07 Forerunner. Uh, yes. There it is. Ooh. My, uh, All right. Forerunner Sport. This, uh -huh. is, this is Ross's like go to. All right. So <laughs> is this your first Forerunner? This was my first Forerunner. Yes. Okay. So I've owned three. So I spy. <laughs> uh, let's see. So it's a sport edition. So that's super rare in of itself. It is. Uh, it's, it's a six, unless if you took the badge off the grill. No, it is six. six. It is Not six. <laughs> and I see, are those FN wheels? Or are they the TRDs that you like, the eight-inch wide TRDs? Yeah, they're the TRD wheels. 
TRD Wales, yep. And during... one time Toyota had a sale, they had the 40% off for their right? 40 years yes. and I jumped out. Oh, it. you gotta oh man. I'm hoping they do that again this year. Um, yeah, that no, that's a really nice, clean looking truck. Doesn't look like there's any rust. We got fucking lucky. No, so Illinois, far, yeah. So far, so good. Uh super I, lucky. I I wanted a forerunner since I was a kid. My neighbors had one when I was growing up. They had the original one with the, you know, the removable hard top in the back. I've just oh, always sweet. been drawn. First gen? First Hell, gen. Yeah. Always been drawn. And I actually have always liked the fourth gen a lot. Um, and so we bought this when my daughter was eight months old. Uh, I remember going into the dealership and this was in, what was it? Oh, Oh nine. So it was right when nobody was buying gas guzzling SUVs. Right. Yeah. The forerunner we know does not, 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 not. Your fuel, like, <laughs> efficiency is not its forte. Not really efficient vehicle. Um, so I felt like we stole this thing. Um, cause I always knew what they were worth and they were always just kind of a little bit out of our range for a while. And then I bought it at the right time and I have not let go of it. Um, I have a picture of me with it when we bought it, holding my daughter. And at this point, I need to have it for a couple more years so that I have the picture of me handing her the keys because hell yeah, she's not too far off and uh, this thing will be around for her. Toyota will make an ad about that if you want yeah, them right. to. <laughs> uh, so, so I've got the Forerunner. That's my, my fun awesome. like, off-road uh, vehicle. And then the other two are not SUVs. I've got a 99 Honda Prelude. Excellent. Uh, which is my fun like zip around. I actually bought this thing with the intention of only having it for a short time and quickly learned that this is very highly desired. Uh, uh, people love this car wherever I go. Uh, and then I've got the 89 Cavalier Z24 convertible. Oh, that's which, yours too? Oh my God. That's also mine. That's amazing. Um, uh, so I, I actually had these two vehicles at Radwood when they were in Chicago. Uh, this summer, which was, a, besides the fact that it was like 96 degrees outside, it was an absolute blast. Um, so much fun talking to people and, and kind of showcasing these cars. I had a Cavalier Z24 was my first car when I was 16. Uh, not a convertible. Amazing. Uh, I had the coupe. Uh, always loved it and said, if I ever find one, I'm going to grab it. So that one you see there, I picked up for 700 bucks. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, oh, you stole like, that. 16 years ago, it had been sitting on the side of a garage for uh, probably almost a year and a half, two years, unmoved. I used to pass it on my way to work and think, God, if they ever pull that thing out. And the one day that it was sitting in the driveway and I saw a for sale uh, sign and it was like a quick U-turn. And I was like, this thing is coming home with me. And 700 bucks. I, I have not oh, done yeah. anything major to it. I put new tires on it replace some pieces that were missing off of it. Uh, but it's it's a fun summer car. It, it cost me nothing. Insurance is dirt cheap on it. Um, and yeah, it's fun. I get a lot of comments on it. And then the Prelude was when we had our third child. Uh, quick story here. Uh, I was We had the a Jetta GLI, which is what I was driving to work. Um, and my wife was driving the 4Runner. And when we found out we were having three, we had to sell the GLI and get the minivan because it just, we needed something with three rows to be practical. And I didn't want to drive the Forerunner into the city and commute every day and park on the streets of Chicago. Um, so I thought I'm going to pick up something a little bit more economical, but still fun. And so I found this Prelude that was a one owner Prelude with 65,000 miles on it. Um, I had a prelude in college too. So I, these have always had a soft spot for me. Um, and so that was my commute to the city car because why not? Long story short, I left that job, but this car has stayed with me. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> because That's awesome. Now I'm in this job where I'm doing car stuff all the time and I mean, <laughs> you can't sell that thing. Or, oh, no. or they're saying, if you sell it, sell it to me. I've got a laundry list of right. people who are ready to buy it. Um, and I kind of see prices starting to creep up on them. And the fact that mine's all stock and it's clean, I mean, it's not riced out and it's not a total rust bucket or anything like that. It's the um, Radwood effect. It's, the price it's will cool. go up. It's fun. I, I haven't driven it as much this past year because of press cars, but I still love taking it out. Good looking car. 
it's crazy those, how those, those are my rides that's my uh, i I've, I've been told they're car guy cars so definitely I guess... anybody that owns a fourth gen forerunner i mean <laughs> shit, it's the unloved you know stepchild of the four Four, fourth gen forerunner and prelude like gets you in two groups like right <laughs> the yep. cavalier that one's its own <laughs> it's a subset like it's it helps that it's a Radwood era car. So it gets you into yeah, Radwood yeah. no matter what. Like you could go talk to weirdos everybody. like us. Yeah. I don't know that there's quite an enthusiast following for the Cavalier. And so, yeah, I take crap for that all the time, but that's okay. See, um, I think there is. I think we just haven't found you the right place on Weird Car <laughs> Twitter yet. Like we need. <laughs> well, so actually I have started a, a second Instagram account that I called Forgotten Survivors. Okay. And it's Absolutely. all old cars like that. Cars that you used to see all the time that uh, you don't see anymore. Uh, Forgotten Survivors 312 is like... I got it. <laughs> I am very uh, good at Google. All right. So you found me. Uh, so <laughs> I started this page like a year ago for the hell or during the pandemic. Holy crap. Page, you have 5,000 followers yeah, in a year. <laughs> this shit took off. I'm like, I can't post a brand new Bronco and get half the comments or likes that I get when I post stuff on here. Oh my and it's God, not just awesome. my car. It's basically car spotting. If I see an old yeah. car and my kids yeah. get into this, um, I, I think it's hysterical. because oh, My five-year-old recognizes cars on the street. He's like, dad, a survivor, a survivor. And so we loop around and try to snap a picture and we share it. And my kids compete to try to get the most likes on Dude, uh, there's, so- there's some quality <laughs> stuff in here too. So it's fun. I, apparently, this is this is the niche for my Cavalier crowd because when I post the Cavalier on here, it does very well. <laughs> I think that uh, tracks. I, I think in England they refer to these as chodes. It's, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's their version of forgotten shitbox, but okay, yeah, basically. But these are awesome. Oh man, a little bit of everything. So I took LeBaron photos the other day. I'm gonna have to send them to you. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like I always used to do take these for the hell of it. Now I have an outlet to share them. And exactly. It's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Kind of fun. Yeah. I, I also so good. This feels so Midwest too. Right. <laughs> like so many of these are things that I've seen too. Like there's a girl who drives around town in one of these wagons, and I've seen her. I I I would. It's like weeks at a time. I'll see nothing. And then like in three days, I'll see her seven times. <laughs> Do you remember that this wagon, and I forgot about it until someone commented, but how they have the double wipers in the back? Yes. Uh, oh no, that's so weird. I never it's, noticed that. I almost There's wanted to be- random things. I wanted I to be learning like- learning from people on this too. <laughs> want to be two guys trying to high five. Like <laughs> they change them. <laughs> they can never actually contact. Right, exactly. It never, it's always <laughs> a moving target. Oh, that's so strange. It's like oh. they got a- cheaper bid from a company that was like nope we're just going to give you double everything instead no, of it, making a part specific, it, specifically for the back it's toyota parts bin at its finest mm-hmm. we have five thousand wipers put them on 2500 <laughs> cameras right <laughs> don't, buy, don't order more <laughs> actually it would only be Ooh, an 1250 cameras <laughs> right exactly <laughs> i said five thousand fair, fair enough uh, mr2 these are yeah. great this is You're good, coming. man. So this here, is yeah, this one in the middle here, this uh, Plymouth Scamp. Oh, we, man. So we spot, my son, my five-year-old, spotted this when we were in Michigan. We were, we actually got turned around because of a detour. And he starts yelling from the back seat, Dad, Dad, Survivor. And I'm like, Oliver, I don't, I, where? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, like, I'm trying to drive and he's pointing into this random lot. So he directs me to it. And I was like, oh, dude, this is pretty rare. This is uh, actually amazing, is. bud. I, would have, I didn't even know that was a thing. I would have thought good. it was a rare page. Uh, they only made this Plymouth version for a year. Hmm. Um, like, it was a one-year, one-and-done Plymouth version of a Dodge Rampage. So he, he takes some serious pride in the fact that he found this one. As he should. Like, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Oh, God. Props to him. Looking I think I'm raising my kids, right? They, yeah. They're, they're learning about Yeah old and new cars all the same as long as it's cars right (laughs) oh Oh, man that's funny now of course i'm gonna go out tomorrow and i'm gonna be like "Hmm, what can i take a picture of well like i (laughs) scrolling through this i just found the the chevy celebrity that's on there too and there's a guy driving a cutlass that i passed on the interstate like in a week i would pass him like four times and i know it's him 
Because who else has one of those right now? Like, it has to be the same dude. He's one of Jim's followers. So. And he's, he's still got the string of flags on the front fender. Like, I'm like, this thing's amazing. It might be an Oldsmobile then if it's got the flags. Probably. Same thing. It's your, same thing. Yeah. All ZM same cars. Thing. There was, like, a version of the Buick and the Pontiac. I think they all had one. <laughs> oh, here it is. It's definitely the, the uh, no? Dude, we've lost Chris now. He's, yeah, yeah Chris is Chris is going down a rabbit this, hole. Here. <laughs> this and what was the other? Who showed us the the worst spec? Um, what was uh, that? Oh, dog. Demuro showed us that, right? Yeah. What's it called? Yeah, it's worst, worst spec. Worst dot spec, and it's just horribly specced. Um, anything, supercars, random cars, like the color combinations uh, are yeah. horrid. Um. <laughs> here I'll, some would I'll, say criminal yes like <laughs> ronald mcdonald lambo oh, would be normal oh. compared to this stuff yeah, like yeah. it is like i don't even how much Why? money did you spend on the car to then ruin it like Why? yeah that z4 is actually hysterical <laughs> this one i would drive the shit oh my god if that thing had like decent engine that would be so funny to like autocross <laughs> the pink wheels though like what <laughs> i just i get so confused yeah, cool. like, yeah. <laughs> how 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 is does someone brain go yes like what what is this oh man is that velvet it's literally velvet like velvet. on the outside of a ferrari like and then it rained and so it looks horrible like, just, <laughs> anyway sorry completely off topic <laughs> so good so bad so bad. First, I got, now I got to try to find Jim again on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jim, what do you have coming up on your side of the auto world that you're excited about in the near future? Uh, so, we're getting ready for another auto show. We are. Um, we did the special edition uh, this past July, which was a crazy whirlwind of two months from the time we got approval to have the show and. The time it took us to pull it off but it was a success we you know the feedback we got from the show was great um but the chicago auto show for over 100 years has been in february in chicago that's that's really our that's when the show takes place um and we like it there because it doesn't we don't compete with anything else it kicks off a traditional spring buying season um of cars of car sales and car shopping uh, you know, manufacturers, they look at our show, they look at New York and LA, and we're all just timed out, you know, we're all spaced appropriately. So LA, the LA show is coming up next week. Um, and then uh, we will be the next show in February. And we're coming back to a 10 day show. And we're, we're really just getting focused on that and, and bringing in our manufacturers, we're talking to everyone now I'm working with our sponsors. Uh, to get our sponsors back uh, at the show as well, um, and you know we're we're excited. It's it's a big undertaking. Um, we're a very small team. We have nine people in our office that are oh, wow. really the backbone of the Chicago Auto Show. From our uh, you know kind of our office personnel manager up to our president, like nine? People, I'm like we're we're really like one man departments. Like I am the marketing department. Like. <laughs> I'm I'm doing the I'm working with the advertising for the show. I'm working with the sponsors, and then I work really closely with uh, our communications team, our PR director Jen Morand, uh, on social media stuff. You know, I I'm just I mean I like taking pictures of cars, so like I like doing that stuff for the pages as well. Um, so a lot of the stuff you see here, you know, I help Jen with um, from a content standpoint, and I get the press vehicles to review for our radio show. So we do our, uh, I guess we didn't really talk about that much, but uh, I do a weekly radio show called Drive Chicago um, here that airs on WLS AM 890. Uh, AM is still alive in, in some capacity. <laughs> and we have the podcast that they put out there as well for our show. Uh, but similar to this, we, we do new car news. We review a vehicle. We go in depth on a vehicle every week. Um, and then we usually bring in guests from different manufacturers or for other journalists uh, to highlight things. I think coming up, 
Uh, we just spoke with, uh, with it Paul Williamson from Lexus uh, to talk about the new NX uh, that was at the MAMA rally that we talked about. Uh, we've got Scott Talon from Jeep joining us next week to talk about the Grand Cherokee and the Grand Wagoneer. Dude, you're going to uh, scoop us by the like two Cherokey weeks. Next month. Yeah. <laughs> you, it's good timing, though, talk? because yeah, I, I got get the Grand Cherokee next Monday. Yeah, Ross is going to get to drive it as a press vehicle, and then we have Scott scheduled for a couple weeks after that. So Perfect. Fingers I've crossed. I've got the Grand Wagoneer coming up in a press vehicle for myself. I've got it the week right after we talk to him. But... How many zeros would you like? Yeah, right. Six. Um, there will be six zero, six digits on that. Six, six zeros. Uh, yeah, I've got a couple of good ones. I've got some Raptor coming too, as well. Nice. I've got the Raptor. And I've got a Grand Wagoneer. So I was like, ah, these are a couple of good, week, good, good weeks of cars. Yep. Yep. Um, so yeah, uh, we do that every week. That's it's, it's uh, a, a regular stuff thing. It's I think fun. you have to go street park the Raptor downtown. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 sh I probably should just for the hell of it. Drive yeah, it just drive there. downtown. Just drive around. Let so, people take pictures of you trying to park. The week of our show this summer in July, I happened to be driving an F two fifty Tremor, oh. uh, which we were. We had some cost saving this year and so we weren't staying in the normally we we move in for the show and we literally like we're in a hotel for about 16 days and we just live oh, downtown God. um because we're there like the show opens at eight or the show open we're in the offices by eight and the show's open till 10 p.m so we're there the whole time every day for 10 days straight Jeez. Um, and then leading up to it our media preview and our black tie gala and all that stuff well this summer we didn't do that they had us commute for part of it, you know, every everything's a little bit, you know, scarce this year. Yeah. So I happened to be driving this F-250 that week. And I was like, really? This is what I'm going to sit in traffic. <laughs> and if you've ever driven down 90 into oh, Chicago uh, on a rush hour morning, uh, it's a whole nother level in an F-250 tremor. Although I, I guess people got out of my way for the most part. Uh, but I certainly couldn't zip through traffic like I could in my prelude. Dude, that's nuts. Probably weighs two and a half times. No, probably two, probably twice the prelude. Yeah, I'm sure. So we the the tremor has become a running joke for Hooniverse as well because when when Jeff, our editor, makes videos, every now and then he'll make a video where he says something and it rubs people completely the wrong way. And for the longest time, it was a was it rugged ridge? With the rugged ridge Jeep video, still kicking, man. Yeah, so he made that video and people hate him for what he says in that video. Well, he recently made a video about the tremor and was like, I don't get it. <laughs> Jeff lives in California. Things are much tighter there. He is getting drilled in this video now. It's, 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 it's the nice. running joke for us to just be like, hey, Jeff, what are the latest comments? Because <laughs> <laughs> they're all horrible. So, and you can go to YouTube. You can you can find this video on the Hooniverse channel and you can read them for yourself if you'd like. They're not nice things. No, no. Also, if you want to spend a half hour really hate in the country, just read the Rugged Ridge videos. <laughs> yeah, the Rugged Ridge ones are not great either. Oof. Slippery's left there, man. Yikes. Anyways. Well, sweet. Yeah, man. Thanks, Jim. Jim, thanks for joining us. Yeah, I, no, I would say, fun. what do you want to plug? But we kind of did it didn't we? i think we did uh yeah you can check out check out our stuff you've got uh we'll be putting tickets for sale for the chicago auto show you guys want to fly out here and check that out uh those will be going for sale uh next month so if anyone that's watching uh, keep an eye on our website chicagoautoshow.com for that and then drivechicago.com is our other website that we manage and you can find uh a link to our radio show as well we've got you know for both auto show and drive chicago we've got twitter youtube facebook instagram all that fun stuff i put together youtube videos of all the cars that i review as well um our, our reviews live on drive chicago's website under our uh, research and reviews uh but we, on our youtube channel you'll find uh, some video reviews as well so fun funny to see which vehicles get a lot of hits and which ones Dope, but I never guess until really a random it. thing it's, it's kind of entertaining to, to think you know so i have a crazy old dodge grain caravan video that i made years ago like seven years ago and a guy commented on it like yesterday <laughs> and it was like a it was like a dumb burnout video and he's like here's how you ruin a transmission i was like it's from seven years ago that truck has been destroyed by now like no who's youtubing 
Dodge Grand Caravan. Grand Caravan Park. Park. <laughs> I don't know. I this is from someone uh, that follows my Forgotten Survivors page. Exactly, hundred <laughs> percent. They were looking for a first gen. A whole different crew. Yeah, one of the exactly. turbo ones. The, didn't wasn't there a turbo manual? There was, there was. a turbo in there. Yeah, that that's what they were looking for. Well, sweet. So. I'm gonna wrap things up. So you can rate and review this show on iTunes. It would help if somebody would do that more recently. Ross and I, um, we have our fingers crossed. We are approaching a giant milestone. We're hoping to get there by the end of the year. Um, it effectively means what we did in the first year would have doubled in the second year if we can get to this milestone. So it's kind of a big deal for us. Yep. Um, so if you're new, you're fairly new, you haven't ever rated the show, please do it. Uh, if you're watching the video, uh, this is on YouTube. So you can like and subscribe on YouTube. Um, please, I, I, I literally have a note here. Please share the show with new people if you have. Like, hey, I, <laughs> I, I don't very often do the needy, like, come listen to the show things. But yeah. like the other day I sent a tweet out and I was like, look at this list of guests that we've had. Like, and I tagged all of them hoping to get some retweets Smart. and I did. So thank you. Thank you, Jeff, Zach, and Mike. <laughs> 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 they knew who they are. So uh, you can follow Jim. It's at JP cars 22 on Instagram at drive underscore Chicago. And what was your survivors one? Uh, at forgotten underscore survivors dot three, one, two. So it's got the underscore and the dot. It does a little confusing, but that's what yeah. was available. You know, Yeah, but you have 5,000 followers. And 5,000 people. Have found me, so. Exactly. Yeah. Something's yeah. working. I'm there. sure yeah. if you type in forgotten survivors, you'll find it. I got F O R G and it came up. So <laughs> So now, I'm doing something right, I guess. There's there's some algorithm probably. there. Like I follow you, I follow Jeff Chicago. Probably, like, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Instagram's helping me out a little bit. So uh you can follow Hooniverse, uh the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. You can read our writing on Hooniverse, UTV Driver, ATV Rider, and Everyday Driver again. <laughs> Ross hasn't changed that note. So it's still it said again for like four weeks now. So I'm, I'm <laughs> hiding. <laughs> Uh, and if you're interested, there are two posts on Hooniverse about EVs, technology, and batteries. And I wrote, I linked to things. I like to, I like to go down the rabbit holes and get to the actual study. Like I like the articles, the the like synopsis. Like let me just read the study. Like when the when the vaccines first came out, I did so much research into mRNA vaccine studies from like 2012. Like this stuff has been around. For, anyway, we're not going to get on. It's too political. <laughs> uh, there yeah, are no but, negative. But read read that shit because chances are if you're listening to the show, you, know, you like nerdy stuff, and that's nerdy stuff. So. <laughs> yeah. so the recycled batteries one really was like, wait, what? Like four thousand cycles more is a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, you can follow Ross at No Not Like the One from Friends, and I'm at Overlanes and Dad. And that's it. We did it. We did. That's, that's the it. show. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, guys. This Thanks, Jim. Thanks for having me on.